<laughs> in studio with us from the Berkeley County Commission, Eddie Gokenauer. Eddie, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Excellent. It's great to see you again. Good to see you. Welcome back. You are the man who never ages. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that. I believe it because <laughs> my eyes see what I believe right there, no. man. No, good man. It, uh, it's, it's, it's good. You know, I feel good. I'm healthy, and uh, I'm very blessed, you know, with that, with having good health. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Very nice. Uh, I want to ask you a couple questions about the homestead uh, exemption as it relates to, and, and I, you can get tell me specifically because I'll probably get the terminology wrong here, some of the uh, ambulance fire emergency fees. Well, it, it only pertains to the ambulance fee. Ambulance, okay. Yeah, the ambulance authority uh, came before us uh, probably a year and a half ago by now and requested an increase, and they gave us three different scenarios in which uh, that they felt would work for them. <clears throat> and because I knew that they needed additional crews, uh, we needed additional ambulances on the road in this county uh, quicker than really than what they had even planned for. Uh, I, I suggested to them uh, and the rest of the council, look, let's let's do a two year uh, fee structure. The first year you will go from sixty to eighty five dollars, and then the second year you will go to one hundred and ten dollars. Uh, now, if you're on homestead exemption or you're disabled, you will stay at the $85. And, you know, when the AMS, uh authority sent out their billing this year, uh, it, was a, it was a bit confusing to a lot of folks and, quite honestly, to myself as well. Uh, it, was, it was not user-friendly uh, as we had hoped that it would be. So we've made some changes. Uh, <clears throat> You, you now, you, know, you still have to fill out the form, but it does not need to be notarized. And you can mail your check for $85 if you are on homestead exemption or disabled. And they will verify it with the assessor's office, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you're not on that, then your bill will be $110. But we, we did this in a two-year step, uh, basically 25 year, or $25 a step. Uh, to get them where they needed to be to put the additional crews on. And just so everybody knows, those crews are out today working. Um, they immediately uh, were able to put staff uh, on the north end and the south end, and they've had a, se a second crew in the middle of the county. Uh, the next step after this will be something on the west side, uh, out hopefully on Mountain Lake Road. <clears throat> um, there's still a need for coverage in that particular area, uh, and, and we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Now, what John and Matt, you can, uh, obviously you can ask Eddie any questions about county government. It doesn't have to be just specifically about this topic, but I do want to go through this topic before we, we move on. As it applies to the homestead exemption, you said if you're on homestead exemption, then you can apply for relief in regards to the ambulance fee. How do you get the homestead exemption? Okay, you, you'll go through the assessor's office. I think you've to. You got to be 65 years old. Uh, to be able to get that, or uh, totally disabled, uh, to be able to get that exemption. And if you qualify, you know, that's, that's a state guideline. Uh, if you qualify for that, you know, through the assessor's office in your county, then, then you will also qualify for that exemption with the ambulance authority. So you just simply fill out the form. You do not have to have it notarized and send it in with your check for $85 and you will be covered. But you've got to pay the $85 first. It goes in. You have to have the check included with the form. Yes. Yeah. I mean, why not Why not send it all at the same time? The form is, is in the envelope. So go ahead and fill out the top part of the form. It is not required to have it notarized. Mm -hmm. And fill out your check and send it in. Matt. Or you can come to the office and do it. But in person or via envelope. Sure. Good night. Is there a particular time of the year that that particular bill comes out so that people are looking for it? Is that going on right now? It is. Uh, it and uh, it came out. I think you know, like right after the first of July. Okay. And um, you have until September the thirtieth to qualify for that uh, home state exemption uh, rate. And when you say qualify, so if I, I'm not yet 65, if I got that bill, though, and I'm 65 years old, I got it that second week of July, I print the form that I need to fill out, I fill out that form, I send in $85, that will automatically 
you know, give me that $85 rate, or does someone then have to approve that homestead exemption that I've applied for? Well, the assessor's office will approve it, and, okay. and once it's on their list, then the ambulance authority can cross-reference it and verify that, yep, Matt's on homestead exemption, right. you're good to go, here's your, 80, you know, your $85. If I don't qualify for that, I may get a bill for the remaining twenty-five dollars. Then later, no, you, no, you pay the one ten. If you don't qualify, you pay for okay. the one ten. All right, but so I'm saying that. So I'm I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting it right. When you mentioned you could send in the 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 form and the eighty-five dollars. Yes. I that that form is saying that I'm already qualified for that homestead exemption. Yes, and then that okay. will give the ambulance authority the go ahead to look and verify that you are on the assessor's uh, homestead list. All right. I want to jump in here real quick because uh, Bill Stubblefield, uh, former president of the Berkeley County Commission, just sent me a text that said the Ambulance Authority webpage says the form must be notarized, Eddie. Yes, sir. It, it may say that, but that is not how it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Disregard that one. Yeah, and, and we worked through their, through their uh, upper leadership. Uh, we spoke with uh, the president uh, of the Ambulance Authority, uh, to get some minor changes made to make this more user-friendly. It was intended to be able to help the seniors, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, never before uh, in this county uh, since 1988 has there ever been a ambulance fee bill sent to a commercial entity. And when they came before us, I'm like, look, these folks need to start paying their way instead of putting on the backs of, of the homeowners in this county to provide the emergency ambulance services. So this year, starting in January, those bills will start going out to uh, the commercial entities in this county, and that will offset the difference. Uh, we're hoping that it will offset that difference uh, of, the, of the fee that they will receive versus the money that, that we save the homeowners, the, the ones who are on homestead. Very good. Mr. Doyle. Uh, yeah, um, I would like to change the subject, if that's okay. Um, sure. Uh, it, it says up on the screen that you're the vice president of the Berkeley County Council. Uh, it's my understanding that you're going to become the Berkeley County Commission once again. Uh, it, when does that take place? It already has. Oh, uh, it, oh. Ju July 1. <laughs> oh, so our uh, uh, our our... Uh, we are guilty of uh, something less than truth in advertising. Is that correct? I'm not accusing <laughs> that. That's, or, uh, Rob has been out for two weeks for sure. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I want to uh, be sure that everybody knows that I did introduce him as a Berkeley County Commissioner. That's what I thought you did, I but did. then I saw on the screen. But that then again, he's been doing that ever since they were a council anyway. So. <laughs> and that part is also true. Yeah. So, so therefore, yeah. when they switched back, I would have already had the track record of being correct. <laughs> um, tell me, uh, when's Berkeley County going to get zoning? Well, that will be up to the people. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been a while since uh, there there was a last referendum. It, if if my history is right, something like twenty years ago there was a referendum and it lost three to one, and then maybe ten years ago there was a referendum and it lost two to one. So it's getting closer. Uh, it, do you think there's uh, uh, that 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 the opinion in the county has maybe evolved now where it might have a chance of passing? Well, I, I think that it's uh, a possibility, you know, okay. and, and truthfully, when, when I announced that I was going to run, that was one of the, probably one of the first five questions that <laughs> I had from folks calling yeah. and say, well, what's your position on zoning? I said, look, the people of this county have spoke loud and clear that they're not interested in zoning. I said, however, if there is a petition that comes before the council that I would be willing to, to put it on the ballot okay. and let them vote again. Now, the last time, Personally, I feel as if the document was way, way too much, way mm -hmm. too thick. I would have, I would like to have seen them start out with a smaller document and let it grow as we grow. But that's just my opinion. Oh, and and I agree with you. Uh, not just thick, but but it was was intricate. Yes, sir. And and any time you have a document that's intricate and you go up to a referendum. Somebody who's opposing it, all they got to do is find, you know, two or three little things in there to say, this is what you'd be voting for. And yeah, it, yeah. Let, and, let me just say this about zoning, Eddie, as this gets considered yeah. once again sometime in the future, whenever that mm -hmm. is. And, and I've never lived in a place that didn't have zoning. 
And uh, as a, where I currently reside, there was property behind me, which was zoned. And the only thing that needed to happen for it to be rezoned was a developer with enough money to get the zoning changed. And if that's the case, there's no sense in having zoning. If you can buy your way out of zoning, then you don't really have zoning. So if, you, if there is a document to be considered in the future, it would need to be written in a certain way that cash doesn't let you get around how a property is zoned. Yeah. Because otherwise, why bother? Rob, you're absolutely right. And I think it was, it was Patrick Henry that said eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Yeah, anytime you have something like that, it's up to the citizens to be alert and say, wait a minute here. The, uh, there's something going on in Jefferson right now. Jefferson has zoning. It's one of, of five counties in the state that have countywide zoning. Uh, and uh, about uh, a, a development called Harvest Hills, which is right near Jefferson High School. It was platted, and, and they began selling lots a number of years ago platted 350 acres for something like, I think it was 392 homes. Now that they've sold a number of homes in there, they're coming to the Jefferson County Planning Commission and say, we'd like to have this rezoned to have 1,004 homes. Well, you know, basically, if they're allowed to do that, this is a bait and switch for the people that originally bought the homes there thinking it was only going to be about one home per acre. There's all kinds of things like this. Mm -hmm. And, and an, an, another consideration is the road that goes by Jefferson High School, Flowing Springs Road, is that uh, capable of handling this additional traffic? I, I don't know. That, uh, uh, it, 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 there are all kinds of things here, but it really is up to the public to stay alert. The uh, um, Eddie, if you want to go ahead and comment, go right well, ahead, sir. Well, my thing was, um, you know, I don't know exactly what zoning in this county would look like. You know, mm -hmm. most all the developers are today following water and sewer lines. That's that's mm -hmm. where they can get their greatest density uh, of housing. You know, last night, you know, I said on the planning commission last night, we approved a, a sketch plan for uh, a Dollar General in Glengarry. Now. I don't know if zoning would stop that or not. Uh, I guess it depends what the document, you know, how it's, how it's developed. But, um, you know, who, who would have thought that we would have a Dollar General in Back Creek Valley? So, Could zoning at least control maybe how a building looks? Like I think of other communities that I've been in on a vacation or wherever where a community, you know, says, look, we, we want to try to keep a, an aesthetic and so, okay, McDonald's come in, but you're not building a normal McDonald's. It's going to have to blend in with the aesthetics. Would would zoning at least allow well, something it, like it that? It could. Okay. You know, it could, Matt, uh, depend upon how it's how it's written, you know, how it's rolled out. You know, the other thing is um, it, it puts a lot of people in a bad spot when I can come to you and say, Matt, uh, our zoning requirement does not allow you to sell the family farm now. And, and that's what you're, you don't perhaps have any, you know, young folks coming up that want to be farmers. Mm -hmm. And there you are with all this work to be done on the farm and you're getting pressure from developers uh, to, to purchase your property. But the zoning requirement says, nope, you can't do it. By the, so, by the same token, if it's done right, it protects the property interest of people who live here, so there's some predictability about what might go go or, or go in near them. Uh, what type of residential development? What type of commercial development? What's going to be there? And again, this is back to my thing about Harvest Hills. You know, to me, this is a pure bait and switch that they're trying to pull. If they were if they wanted a thousand home subdivision, they should have applied for that to begin with sure. before they sold the first lot. That's right. And and uh, I do know that uh, businesses like zoning because they want to have some idea of what's going to be in what kind of business yeah. Predict might come in nearby. Predictability, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got a text uh, with a question for you, Eddie. And, uh, uh, says uh, was reading in the paper today about hearings scheduled for TIF districts in Berkeley. Uh, do you have any knowledge on this? The paper doesn't give a whole lot of data about it. Sure. Uh, actually, it, it was something that uh, I had brought to the table. 
uh, after speaking with uh, Greg Rowe in particular with the uh, uh, water district. Uh, the TIF districts, we've identified two separate areas. There's a North uh, TIF and a South uh, TIF district. And truthfully, what that does, it allows growth to be able to help pay for infrastructure. Uh, you take a property that's today, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, taxed at a agricultural rate, uh, and now it's been sold to a developer who's going in and building a, a huge warehouse or perhaps multiple warehouses or industry comes in on it. So the difference of the tax value as when it was agriculture compared to what it will be with the, uh, with the industry or the commercial activity on it, that difference in the taxes is tremendous. So that money will go towards the uh, infrastructure that, we've, that we will identify. Uh, the school districts are protected by the state. The state makes up the difference that they would lose. Uh, so really and truly, the only ones that are losing is the county government is losing that revenue. However, it, it, it gives us the opportunity to, to build additional infrastructure without going back to the ratepayers to ask for that additional money. So it's a great opportunity for us to be able to do that. Uh, you know, John Stump is, is the lawyer that's, that's handling most of that. We're working it through the development authority. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts with this. Uh, I, I will tell you that one of the very first things that we're looking at is to be able to build a new fire station uh, on the north end of the county with those t uh, tax increment financing dollars. So, John Stump also represents Swan, and they are working a potential plan for a tax increment financing in Harper's Ferry, too, for the Hilltop House. That is correct. Uh, and I, I will say uh, this is a, a lot of the public confuses TIFs with pilots. Uh, pilot stands for payment in lieu of taxes. I think it, it, while they're similar, to me, the TIF is the fair and sensible way to do it as opposed to the pilot. The pilot, you just simply reduce the taxes or, or eliminate the taxes on the business and say, there you go. Whereas with the TIF, you collect the taxes and then use it. It has to be in that area, but you use it for the benefit of the people who live in the area with improved inf infrastructure. To me, that's the sensible way to do it. And I'm not saying I'm for or against the TIF for, 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 for Swan at Hilltop House. I, I don't know enough about it yet, but uh, I am much more favorable to the idea of a TIF than I am the idea of a pilot program. Well, and with the pilot, a lot of times the school system is the one that really and truly loses. That's uh, right. With this, that's whereas right. With the TIF, uh, the the state will make the school system whole. Right. Yeah, which actually is one of the few times where it's advantageous in West Virginia to have the funding system for the schools that we have here in West Virginia, mm -hmm. because if you have a county funded school system, the TIF hurts the school system. But because the state is involved in funding schools in West Virginia it actually doesn't hurt the school system. Yeah, and the state actually, uh, the, the uh, State Development Authority has to approve the TIF. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not something we can do on our own. Like I say, there's a lot of moving parts with this. Uh, but, yeah, I was excited about it because it was something different, you know, that, mm -hmm. that we're looking at other ways to, to pay mm -hmm. for our infrastructure without going back to the ratepayers. So it's exciting. How do you identify or how have you already identified those particular areas to the north and the south? Well, you know, typ typically, you know, um, you know, we, we looked at the, the entire corridor, to tell you the truth, to think of, okay, could we do the entire 81 corridor? Well, it really didn't make sense because the city's in part of that corridor as well. So let's break it down to the north end and the south end. Uh, we spoke to the, uh, to the entities at, like, the water and sewer district. Hey, do you have any needs in this particular area? Uh, like on the north end, they really didn't. They're in pretty good shape on the north end because they're very close to the water plant there. Uh, the, and the sewer plants are, are relatively new for the most part. So they're in pretty good shape. So, okay, all right, now let's look at a firehouse there because the fire board uh, is looking at uh, redoing uh, or building a new firehouse for Beddington. Uh, which will include the ambulance service as well, and hopefully the sheriff's office. Hopefully it will be a, a public safety building where all entities are under one roof. 
Uh, so hopefully those, that, that will work out for that. Now on the, on the south end, you know, especially in that uh, Tabor Station corridor, in that commercial corridor, you know, uh, the Development Authority has property on the west side without utilities. So, you know, hopefully that money can be identified and used to get the water and sewer uh, across the interstate. I have a question on our Facebook page, Eddie, if you may, uh, you may know or may not know uh, the answer to this one, but uh, from Brad Knoll, why were there two large fire trucks, ladder trucks, with many staff working on the stoplight at the Hedgesville Burger King yesterday? I did not see any DOH people there. Well, I'll start with, uh, Brad, we, we don't work on uh, stoplights. Uh, <laughs> that, that is a DOH function. Uh, what they were doing yesterday, they were paying respect to uh, a deceased uh, member and I'm, I think one of the former fire chiefs of Hedgesville, uh, Mr. Donnie Donaldson, had passed away, uh, a longtime uh, supporter of the fire service in Hedgesville, and really even even uh, a couple years ago when I was still working, uh, uh, Donnie would come uh, to the firehouse just to visit for you know a little while. Great guy to talk to, uh, had a lot of history with him, and uh, but but. That's the fire department. Uh, yesterday, we're paying respects to uh, uh, Mr. Donaldson. Very nice, Brad. Thank you for asking the question, Eddie. Uh, as always, you, you know your stuff, especially when it comes to the fire departments and emergency services where you've spent your career. I I try to still uh, at least know what's going on. You know, uh, you know, everybody always says you miss it. Well, I, yeah, I <laughs> I, I do. Uh, I, I wish I wasn't sixty six years old, but. Um, you know, it, it's a physical job, and I'm, I'm not a guy to stand out in the yard. That, that's not me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm the guy to say, come on, let's go. You know, we, we got to go. So um, that's just the way it is. And, and I, you know, it's part of my life. It will always be part of my life, you know, to the day I die. Uh, the fire service has been very, very good to me and my family, and I hope that I've been good to it. Uh, last question for you, Eddie. Are you still the liaison to Parks and Rec? I am, yes. All right. Uh, any updates on Lambert Pool and summer basketball? No. Uh, I, actually, I just tried to call Bob before I came in, and he wasn't able to take my call. Uh, I know that the park board met with uh, the city this past week or maybe last week. Um, I know it's very frustrating for a lot of people, but I can assure you uh, if that park could be open, it would be open. Uh, and it and there was trouble, I know, with the with the basketball leagues. There's some concern over some volleyball leagues that's going on. So um, I, I don't know all the details uh, of that, but hopefully today at 1130 I'll be able to nail some of that down. Eddie, thanks so much. Appreciate you coming in today. You're welcome. Thank you.